All right, today we're gonna work on hooking up the fuel pump controller and making it come on only when the engine is actually running. This may bore some people, but this actually can be used for other applications. Anything you need, um, you know, come on only when the engine is actually running, not during the ignition being on or the cranking phase. Only when the when the, only when the engine is actually running. And we're going to use these parts. You're going to have to have a five-pin relay. You're going to need a Bosch relay, but it's going to have to have this 87A pin in the middle here, which is a normally closed um, pin. A four-pin won't work. We got our oil pressure switch. This is a PS64. This is a three-pin. We really, we really only need a two-pin. We'll be using the uh, uh, the normally yeah the normally open pins. This is normally closed, common, normally open. I'll explain that later. This is a cool part right here. This can be used for not just this but anything. This is kind of an obscure thing here. This what this does is when you have your vacuum pump delete, like you're doing a swap or you mo remove the pump like I like I have. The top port that you plug, you can remove that plug, replace it with this, and then you have an 8 inch MPT threaded adapter. So we're going to take that, we're going to thread it into the switch, just like that. Pretty cool piece. That's Earl's, and that's LT0001ERL. Kind of an obscure thing, but it'd be great for like if you're going to feed a turbo or I don't know, say you wanted to put an analog oil pressure gauge for some reason in there, you could do it with this. There's not too many places on these LT motors that are convenient to tap an oil source. And then we got our just our our busman add a circuit deal here with a five five amp fuse for the whole deal, make it a little cleaner. And here's the here's the wiring diagram. I think I got the poles on the relay right this time so might give me a hard time about it I changed the form over here also all right anyway how this works fuel pump controller power and ground this is looking at the back of that oil pressure switch this is a starter up here or starter relay anything anything that's active only when the starter's turning and of course our five pin relay we're not using 80, uh, pin 87 like you normally would. We're using 87A, which is that terminal in the middle, and then a 5 amp fuse on our out of circuit. So how this works is, at rest, with the uh, with the key on, you can see that the circuit is complete. This over here is normally the back of the switch is normally in this state here so at rest with no pressure it's here when you give it 5 psi pressure it closes the switch over here so um, so at rest you got power going to the fuel pump controller but you really don't because there's no pressure has been built in the motor yet so it's open so the sequence is this you turn the key you hit the starter the starter energizes the relay and doesn't close the circuit, it opens it. So anytime the, start, the starter is turning, the relay is open and won't let power go through. So that takes care of that part. While it's cranking, pressure is being built over here, so this will swing closed. So the fuel pump controller would be on if it wasn't for the starter holding open the relay. So once pressure has been, been built, the starter stops. It de-energizes the coil and closes the circuit, making everything work. So, in other words, nothing should come on until the motor is actually running. Hopefully. So that's exactly how I'm going to do it right there. All right, let me get to it here. All right, the switch that you come up with. Got sealer on it. Remove that top plug and the delete down there and screw this in. All right, we got it installed. There's the plug I took out. 
and then you can see if you can see it. Yeah, it's right there. It's it hanging out of the block there. Real simple, real easy, real easy to get to also. So if you need to tap an oil source, that's a good spot right down there for sure. I think the only other one is like somewhere up here underneath the manifold or something. It's not easy to get to. That one's really easy to get to. All right, let's see if this is gonna work. I think I may have had the poles wrong on that switch down there. We should see some action here. This thing's gonna start. I hope it's gonna work. Yeah, there it went. So that's working. The pressure, pressure side of it's working. goes off pretty fast. Now pressure's got to drop, so there's going to be a little bit of lag there, but it's okay. All right, well, the little pressure side of it works. Then we just got to hook up the starter side and tie it all in over here. All right, may have to stop there today, though. All right, well, we got that, got that working. Yeah, I had it wrong. This is not, these two are not correct over here. This is actually should be this. Trying to go over here. But other than that, so far so good. That's taken care of. We just gotta hook up this. Alright, that'll probably be tomorrow. Alright guys, we got it all hooked up. Everything works good. The uh, fuel pump controller only comes on when the in when the engine's running, which is exactly what I need to accomplish. So now I can start scaling in the, the uh, pressure of the secondary fuel pump in vacuum, not just boost. So we can get it, we can get it primed and ready to go before it really needs it. That worked good. I'll show you how it works. Down there, you can see that's where the oil pressure uh, switch is. These are the two leads running up from it, two pink wires. One of the pink wires goes to the fuel pump controller and the other pink wire goes to pin 87 of this relay that's the middle pin one of the switch pins now the other side of the switched uh, deal just goes to a 5 amp fuse and I've just tapped it in with the thinner cooler pump so it's just power on one of the switch side of the terminals and um, the, one of the pink wires on the other. Now, uh, the green wire that you see there is on pin 87 of the starter relay. So when the starter relay closes, it uh, hits the green, the green uh, side of the coil wire. Once one one side of the coil is with this green wire here, the other side is just a ground wire. It's that blue wire here. I just have it grounded right here. So can't be any easier at all. So those that don't have a fuel pump controller but need something that'll come on only when uh, the engine's running, that's a good way to do it. And uh, we'll drive around later and see how well it works. But um, yeah, so far so good. Just need to get some wire loom to clean up these wires. And this is what it ended up looking like. I was wrong about these wires down here. I don't know which one's the common. Actually, it's one of these. Um, I know it's a triangle. It's kind of hard to explain. I'm not exactly. I don't remember. I think this one up here is facing this way, and these two are facing this way, I believe. So. I don't know, you have to figure it out. It's not that difficult. 
And uh, yeah, this up here is the fuel pump relay is number 68 in the underhood fuse box. And you just need to attach your wire from the coil side to pin 87. Real simple. Okay, this is a demonstration of how the fuel pump controller works. I've got a 12 volt light bulb hooked up to the poles on the fuel pump. And it'll light up. The more intense the, the light is, obviously, the more voltage it's going to the pump. So you'll see um, how it progressively uh, controls the fuel pump rather than having the hop switch throw it, in, throw it all on at one time. So somewhere around seven to five inches of vacuum, the pump will start rolling and it'll just get it, it'll just start duty cycle will increase from there. Rather than having that hop switch just, you know, bang at three pounds of boost or whatever I had it, just turning on 100%, it's kind of slowly, you know, it's more of a demand type, type setup. setup in the, in the hop switch for sure. The hop switch almost felt like when you got to its trigger point that it was almost like a miniature shot of nitrous. But it seemed like it would, I don't know, just, it wasn't so bad. Um, it's when you got to, it's when you got to the, to the set, to the break point of the hop switch and your, your foot kind of rode right in that range. So it was constantly kind of kicking in and kicking out. So this is just a lot better setup for sure. And, you know, I don't think that I'll put the hop switch back on because I don't think we need 100% of this pump running at all. Um, I've got it scaled in there right now, probably a little, a little bit too much right now. I just want to do that for demonstration purposes. I think I can probably scale it out a little. I mean, scale it in a little, a little slower, even at this. But, uh, yeah, it works real good. It seems like the, the pumps now can kind of work in, in sync with each other, meaning the, the primary uh, PWM and the secondary pump I added. So, you know, before where the my secondary pump was kind of the helper pump to the PWM, I think now they basically kind of work together, so I don't think one of them really can be considered the helper pump. I mean, they're, you know, they're both demand-driven, so they're both helping each other out. It's worked out real well. 